super cool welcome we got uh, coming here. All the people, it's a few more than when I, when I got hired. There's a few people out here when I got hired. There's a lot more now. Super exciting for our kids to see the support they've got from fans back in Tuscaloosa. So we're fired up. I mean, obviously, uh, first Final Four in school's history. So something special. You know, our uh, chaplain, Scotty Holland, has been talking to this team about historic, what, you know, what, what it would mean to be historic, and it's historic now. So we've made history, first, first team ever in Alabama basketball, and you think about all the big time players that have come out of Alabama through the years, and tons of NBA players. There's only been one Elite Eight team, and now it's, this is the first Final Four team. So it, it, this group's special. You know, they've come together and it's, you know, obviously everybody knows about Mark Sears in the country now and he's been great for us all year and he, on a bad night, he drops 20. So, you know, we've needed him to be great. He's the leading scorer in the NCAA tournament right now, but well, Edie may have just passed him. In 40. Uh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> the, uh, but uh, until today, he's had the most points in the tournament. Uh, but it's been a lot of other guys have stepped up, you know, Diabate. If it wasn't for him, we don't win the game against Grand Canyon. If it's not for Grand Nelson's unbelievable day, and some, somebody gave me a stat. I think the only people that have 24, 12, and 5 in the NCAA tournament game was I think Shaq, Tim Duncan, Channing Fry, and Grant Nelson, which is a pretty crazy company to be in. So, Diabate, Grant, Jaron Stevenson. If we don't have Jaron, go 5A from 3 and play as tough as he did and make as many, sorry about that, make as many blocks, rebounds, all that. We, we're not where we're at. So it's been a lot of guys coming together. You know, this week off between games will hopefully get uh, Reitzel back with us because we're going to need all the firepower we can get on the offensive side and defensively. I've been watching some UConn film on the way back. And you know, I obviously watch UConn whenever I get a chance. I'm, I'm close to Danny Hurley. But, so it's it's cool that we play each other in the Final Four. It, it stinks that we play each other because they're really good. And, like to to continue to advance and you know once you get to the final four they're all good teams you got to play good teams but we'll have to figure out a game plan to give us a chance to uh, win this game but uh, i'm fired up for our guys you know they had today off nice uh easter sunday we got back but we'll, we'll get back at it tomorrow and start to put the game plan in you mentioned latrell there's a report out that's kind of has some optimism first what's the update on him and second how big was it to win to give him that shot to, to play in the final four no it's huge because you know with the head injuries you got to make sure that you keep their long-term health at the forefront so we don't want to do anything to risk that but i think with another week off between games it just gives them more time you know they've got to pass protocol and they're going to make sure that he you know he's fine and not risking any future uh you know, head trauma or whatever. So I think another week off gives us a real shot that he, he's got a pretty good chance to play. Talk about watching some UConn film to try to find a flaw in a team that seems so flawless in many ways. How difficult is this scout going to be for you? Yeah, I mean, toughest team we played all year for sure, but we've played some good ones. Purdue looked pretty good today against Tennessee. We played Purdue. We played Tennessee twice. We played Arizona. You know, so we've played other teams that shoot North Carolina was pretty good. You know, we played some other really good teams, none quite as uh, complete as UConn. You know, Klingon's, you know, our analytics people have Klingon second best post up big in the country right behind Edie, and that's, Edie's the best big in a long time in college basketball. So if it wasn't for Edie, Klingon would be the best post up big in the country almost any other year. So, you know, they've got him, but then they also have Cam Spencer can really shoot it. They've got, you know, Tristan Newton's going to be a first-round pick, probably a lottery pick. You know, I mean, they, they, don't, they don't have many kind of go down the line. Like, everybody they play in the rotation's solid, good. Like, North Carolina had some non-shooters we were able to play off of. UConn doesn't have that as much, so we're, we're going to have to come up with a little different game plan to, to try to negate Klingon. You know, we, I thought we had a good plan against Baycott because we've struggled with some of these bigs, and I think it's good that we've played them. You know, we played Creighton. They got caught for a really good big. So we, we played some of the best bigs in the country, which is good. We just we have to come up with a plan on this one. Coach, have you heard any uh, congratulations, texts, phone calls, et cetera, from any people, that notable people that you don't normally talk to? Yeah, there's been... 
quite a few. I'm trying to think. Some some NBA head coaches have reached out to me that I've gotten to know through the uh, just through the coaching business, which is kind of cool. Then I hear from kind of randomly uh, some other coaches in the business that have been um, good, you know, mentors when I need them to be. If so, I I mean, shoot. Uh, anybody that I've kind of talked to and traded phone numbers with that's in the basketball, I think I've heard from, which that, that took a while to get through all those in and of itself. I mean, there was 500 last night and then a lot more this morning. So we didn't have Wi-Fi. It was good we didn't have Wi-Fi on the plane because then it, I can just watch film on UConn. I, I need to start to focus my uh, attention on UConn. But, yeah, that was, that was pretty cool, actually. How do you balance celebrating the biggest achievement this program's ever had and then not getting too lost in that because you still have a big mm -hmm. test ahead? Yeah, it's good we've got a week off. I told our guy, you know, usually with the guys, it's said take 30 minutes and now we got to move on because you got two days and then you're playing the next game. we got a week, so I told the guys go ahead and celebrate for 24 hours. We're going to leave here. Staff's going to meet. We're going to get organized on it tomorrow morning. Uh, we're going to have the first day you know, kind of put the first scout in with the players. So players have been able to take the uh, all of today and enjoy it a little bit. And then tomorrow morning, we're going to get refocused on that. And, you know, and it's, I, I've never been in a Final Four. You know, it seemed like there was a lot of media attention when I won a first round game at Buffalo. And a couple of years we did that, and made three Sweet 16s here. And the media gets big. So, I'm sure it's going to go through the roof with this. So I, I'm going to have to be disciplined not to be distracted from the task at hand. We're going to have to discipline the players. I have to make sure Steven, my SID, keeps all of you away from me so that I can concentrate on my job. But we're, nah, I'm just kidding. We'll, we'll give you appropriate time. But we uh, we do got to be disciplined and make sure that we get appropriate preparation time. Two more after that. And still enjoy the... Uh, He's doing his job. You know? <laughs> Coach, Coach, talk about the future. Obviously, the job is not done, but you walk on. But you add a Final Four to your resume and to the future of the program. Just talk about what a Final Four like this does for the future of this basketball program. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of good programs. I mean, I was pulling for Tennessee and the SEC, and I think Coach Barnes is an unbelievable coach and even a better man, and he's been great to me. Since I've gotten this league, I, you know, we weren't able to watch the game. We saw the score and we landed. I was disappointed that they, they weren't able to make it. I'd love to see two SEC teams in the Final Four. But, like, T Tennessee hasn't made a Final Four. You know, so Alabama's not the only good basketball program that hasn't seen a Final Four. So to finally get there, you know, I know in this state it's a big deal because Auburn finally got theirs the year before I, you know, the year before I coached at Alabama. Like, uh... I, uh, I mean, I think, shoot, they were making the Final Four when I was getting hired. So we now have ours, so we, we kind of have put, but, you know, the, the, the elite programs make Final Fours. You know, the elite ones make them on a consistent basis. Now that we've got our first one, we'd like to jump into that level of elite where we're constantly challenging to make. And I think we've been there, being the number one overall seed, you were favored to make one, but in a one-game elimination tournament, it's hard. You have one bad game out of those four games, and you, you don't make it. So we, uh, we we finally got here. I think it validates what we've been doing in the five years we've been here, and we're going to make it our goal to try to get here every year. It's not going to happen. So I don't want everybody to, you know, shoot. I saw a stat. There was only four programs in the country that had made three out of the last four Sweet 16s. I think it was us, Gonzaga, Creighton, Shoot, the other one slipped on my mind right now. But uh, I think there was only four that had made uh, three out of the last four Sweet 16s. So it's uh, it's not – just making Sweet 16 is not easy, let alone Final Four. So to make it good – I mean, I was talking to Greg Byrne. He was the AD at Arizona when they were really good. He told me this was his fourth Elite Eight game, and he was 0-3 in his first three at Arizona. So we, we I didn't realize that. I don't, think he, I don't think he told me that on, on purpose, just not to add any extra pressure to it. But I, I was really happy. He's like the best AD in the country. I love Greg and Regina both. They're, they're such good people to work with. So I didn't realize we got him his first Final Four. So I, I'm, I'm happy that we got Greg his first Final Four, that we got the 
state of Alabama, the University of Alabama, its first Final Four, and we're going to try to get our team prepared to, to make a run in the Final Four here. Coach, how do you balance the priorities between rest and practice these couple days you got in Tuscaloosa? Well, we're going to make sure that Wrightson doesn't get hurt again in practice. That's a priority. We're going to make sure nobody else gets hurt because we can't afford another injury. But we've got to prep, so it's not going to be a normal week of practice because it's it's too risky to risk injury. And now you got to practice live, so you got to do a little bit. But we're going to do a lot more, put the scout in, make sure we keep their conditioning up, make sure we get their, you know, skill level back up, make sure they're in the gym shooting. We're going to have to make shots. So you can't beat Connecticut without making shots at a high level. So we're going to make sure that we keep the skill up and, you know, and we're going to do a lot of a lot of video work to show what the scout is and probably more walkthroughs than, than live stuff. But we're going to have to go a little bit live, just trying to make sure we control enough to where we're not risking any further injuries. Thanks, Coach.